As part of the 2019 Vivid Festival in Sydney, the Warren Center was invited to speak at the Vivid Ideas Exchange under the theme, Who Are You Really? Human Identity in a Digital World. My name is Ashley. I used to code computers and make really long engineered polymer molecules. Today, the molecules that I think about most often are the polymers that make up human life. Like all of us, I do frequently ask myself, who am I, really? In computer coding, when we drill down to the switches that are etched on digital silicon chips, computer code is binary, lots of ones and zeros, a switch is on or a switch is off. Nature has its own code that modern science is just translating. The code of genomic identity is not binary. Four letters write the DNA alphabet. Each DNA letter code stands for what one type of what's called a nucleobase. These combine into nucleotides and other pieces that build up the strands of DNA molecules. Biomolecular chemistry is new, complex, and geometric. New discoveries explain previously unknown aspects of human identity. I originally trained as a chemical engineer, but today every future-focused university adds biomolecular engineering to its repertoire. Humans have 23 chromosomes, each made of DNA coiled up like a spring, like the blue X blob at the top left. The full human genome has 6 billion letter codes, and DNA reproduces itself to grow from a single fertilized human egg to a full baby. DNA, RNA, and proteins tangle up in complex geometrical knots. Scientists are just learning how it all relates to human identity. DNA is the maestro of the orchestra of life. Like a binary digital computer code, DNA is a program, a recipe, and a script about how to make life and how to regulate life. In 2007, Craig Venter of the Human Genome Project published the first completely sequenced human genome, his personal genome, and he published it on the internet. Floor to ceiling, it would occupy a full shelf at a library. Fast forward 10 years later, and in 2017, Craig Venter published predictive studies. Taking a genomic sample, Venter can enter the data in a computer model and predict a person's face. Each pair of faces is the actual face photo on the left and the stunningly accurate computer prediction on the right. Consumer DNA tests like this 23andMe spit kit are available today. In addition to family identity, 23andMe gives health prediction reports on breast cancer, Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's, and as of March 2019, a prediction on type 2 diabetes. This low-cost method opens human gene sampling and testing to millions of users. A serial murderer called the Golden State Killer is connected to 13 murders and 50 rapes in California from the 1970s and 1980s, a 30-year unsolved cold case. In April 2018, California police arrested former police officer Joseph James DeAngelo. A police sketch of the Golden State Killer is flanked by DeAngelo's current photograph at arrest on the right and his old photo as a police officer from the 1970s. Working with a genealogist, Rape Kit DNA was uploaded to the personal genomics website, GED Match. D'Angelo was allegedly matched to DNA from distant relatives who had uploaded DNA to the database. D'Angelo was charged with murder and kidnapping. His trial is pending, and he remains innocent until proven guilty in court. The arrest raises important ethical questions about digital DNA identification. In 1998, I met an engineer in Amsterdam named Johan. As a 12-year-old child, I read the diary of Anne Frank, and at dinner, I asked Johan about the history of Amsterdam in World War II. A child himself, during the Nazi occupation, Johan said his strongest memory was the desperation of eating tulip bulbs in a season of extreme starvation called the Hunger Winter. Epigenetics is the research of proteins that sit on top of the DNA molecule. Dutch doctors and midwives took meticulous birth records even through the Nazi occupation and hunger winter. The children of 1944-45 had abnormally low birth weights. Surprisingly, though, they were heavier than normal later in their lives. Also in a previously unexplained and startling discovery, changes were discovered in their grandchildren, mother 
child, grandchild. The third generation, today's generation of the survivors, have higher blood triglycerides, higher obesity, and higher diabetes. A chemical signal from the mother told her single-cell fertilized egg, store up fat, my baby, stay alive. This message was further transmitted from the children of the hunger winter mothers to the next generation of the survivors of the Nazi famine. 22,000 people starved to death in the hunger winter of 1944-45. So what does that mean about the identity of the fat people in Holland today? Are they too lazy to exercise? Are they gluttons addicted to chocolate? Are they guilty of a sin themselves, or do they bear the genomic marks of the sins of the Nazis? Today's adults bear that trauma of the Nazis imprinted on their own human identity and their physical appearance. As a teenager, my friend Bridget had cystic fibrosis, a life-defining and fatal lung condition she inherited. She died in her 20s, a beautiful, vibrant young woman. Today, the CFTR gene has been located on chromosome 7. Using, techno using technology called CRISPR, researchers can edit and repair this gene in small samples. Like a person climbing up a ladder, the CRISPR enzyme climbs up the DNA molecule with little molecular scissors and locates the specific genetic defect, cuts it out, and replaces genetic material with, with the correct letters of the DNA alphabet. In 2017, researchers successfully edited embryos at the moment of fertilization. A human egg held with suction to a glass tube is touched with an ultrafine needle containing sperm bearing the father's genetic heart mutation mixed with a CRISPR enzyme. In 42 out of 58 edited embryos, the mutation was successfully removed. At the Warren Center, we don't do this research. We tell stories about research, and each Friday we tell these stories in the prototype newsletter. The feminist Muriel Rukeyser expressed her identity through her provocative poetry. She rejects my molecules and insists that the universe is made of stories, not of atoms. My atoms are replaced with books at the entry plaque at the New York City Public Library. If I go to my Apple computer and I ask the internet, where do evil and disease originate, the same answer returns to me that was told to me as a child, a story of Adam and Eve common to all three Abrahamic religions, written in the 5th century BC book of Genesis. Centuries later, the Christian philosopher Augustine explained his conceptions of original sin, predestination, and free will. Adam and Eve ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and their ancestors are forever afflicted with Augustinian original sin. John Cousin the Elder painted Eva Prima Pandora, Latin for Eve is the first Pandora. Several hundreds of years before the authors of Genesis attributed the sins and evils and diseases of the world upon Eve, the Greek poet Hesiod recorded the Pandora myth. Eve was not the fan first Pandora. The timing is all wrong. But carbon-dated Greek manuscripts do not matter in the debate over the origin of the species and the nature of human identity. Although our identities have been written in our DNA for hundreds of thousands of years, the stories we still tell about the origin of life, the nature of identity, and the origin of disease fail to incorporate mankind's latest understanding of science. Who are we? In the modern world, science increasingly explains human identity. Identity is not a binary switch of on, off, one, zero. Modern science describes a broad natural variation in the spectrum of human identity. Universal stories recorded on cassettes and vinyl and Greco-Roman papyrus and even clay tablets transmit the knowledge of our ancestors from culture, religion, history, families, communities, all ancient institutions. The processes of cultural indoctrination are slower than science to adopt biomolecular explanations. Who am I really? My name is Ashley. I used to code computers and make really long engineered polymer molecules. Today the molecules that I think about most often are the polymers that make up human life. Many thanks to Erica Lee and Milan Gandhi of The Legal Forecast and to all the brilliant presenters at Who Are You Really? Human Identity in a Digital World it was a really excellent night of ideas and insights. Thank you all.